What's up everybody and welcome to this week's 3D printing news with 3D printer Mike. So let's go ahead and get into it. I have everything on my computer so I actually don't forget to mention some things this week. Um, you know I always kind of base it off a little script usually that I wrote beforehand so I can make sure I hit key points but this time now with my computer here I can go ahead and just pull up everything that I want to talk about. I was going to add a green screen just to make something a little bit nicer to look at for you guys but I ran out of time and with 3D printing news just saying it right now I don't know if I mentioned it in last week's video that we're going to have this a continual weekly series it's going to always go live at 9 a.m eastern or 6 a.m pacific standard time and that will be every friday if it comes out later that's because some sort of news dropped and i wanted to add it to the video but that's what i'm shooting for every single week is to launch at 6 a.m pacific standard time and 9 a.m eastern if that ever changes i'll definitely let you know and be on the lookout early next week i also want to launch my tech news video so if you guys are interested in that let me know down below what you guys would like me to discuss what kind of topics you would like me to discuss hardware or software maybe some news on upcoming products i think that would be cool to talk about so with that being said this is going to stick purely 3d printing every single friday in a last note as a kind of personal update i did have my wife give birth to our beautiful baby girl and you know what we couldn't be happier and i want to thank everybody for congratulating me and all that on the last video i it, it means a lot guys when you guys reach out to me and you say you know congratulations personally it again it's awesome that i'm building a community and that you know i i don't know i just it makes me feel kind of heartfelt inside so with that being said Let's go ahead and get right into the news. So the first thing we actually have is a leak from Cheaty. So the leak was their Q2. So currently Cheaty actually has the Q1 Pro on their website. It's listed for 429. That build plate size is 245 by 245 by 240. So it's a smaller printer. It's close to the Bamboo Lab, like the standard size. I think kind of the benchmark now is the 256 by 256 by 256. Um, you know, it has active chamber heating, all of that for 429. So this printer actually seems like a good deal, but I know they can be hit or miss. With that being said though, the Q2 looks to kind of take the spot of this printer. So I'm gonna guess maybe it's in that $500 price range. Um, based on the leaks, if you go through all of the pages, it does state that it has active chamber heating. Um, the build plate size was actually, let's see here, I'm looking at the Reddit where people were discussing it, 270 by 270 by 256. So that's actually bigger than the Bamboo Lab. Um, I couldn't find that on all of the PDFs they had. There's so many different PDFs in this link that I, I was having trouble sorting through them. Now I will say they did make it look more like the plus four if it's going to be the successor to the Q1. Um, so I guess that kind of matches up their silverish kind of, I don't know, cyber truck looking printers. It makes sense. Um, but I mean, I'm surprised that this hasn't actually gotten more traction. I haven't really seen this anywhere else. You know, I actually think that this could be a good product. I had reached out to Chidi not too long ago, it was a couple months ago when my channel was first starting to come up and they said they would add me to the list of influencers potentially to review products. I'm not holding them to it or anything, but it, the way they kind of worded me getting added to the list for upcoming products made it seem like maybe they had a printer in the pipeline. Now I thought the Cheaty Box came out and that was the product they were talking about, but it didn't quite match up, right? Because I don't have a Cheaty, so I can't use it. So it makes sense that they wouldn't have sent that to me, but. I don't know, it kind of made it seem like maybe they had a product upcoming and maybe this is what, uh, maybe this is why I was getting those vibes. So it will also have multicolored support. Um, it comes with a hot end that can get to 370 according to this user. Like I'm kind of basing it off the Reddit comments. I tried to read through it, but there's a lot there. Um, there's quite a bit to this printer. It does look like it's going to be a good contender to come in and knock out some people and hopefully they don't have some of the issues they had with the plus four when it launched. If they can have a smooth launch with this printer, I do feel like it sets them up with success to gain some more market share because it does have a lot of features that other printers don't have. You know, the active chamber, you know, have a really hot nozzle going up to 370. That's kind of high for a lot of this stuff. And, you know, I know there's a lot of people who it's either you really love your Q1 or it's either you really love your plus four or you really don't. So if they can make it where we can kind of get a good experience on the printer, I think it will work out for everybody. Let's go ahead and talk about a multi-tool head printer 
that I've discussed on another episode. So we have the Snapmaker U1. So they actually have where you can sign up, you can put a deposit down now and you can kind of reserve your spot in the Kickstarter. You'll actually end up, I believe, getting like a $100 refund. Uh, let me verify that. It says you will turn your $30 into $350 in launch perks. So you get priority shipping, you'll be in the earliest batch, you enjoy $100 cash back, plus exclusive Kickstarter launch discounts after fulfillment. They don't really make it known what that is. You know, it says join the community, blah, 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 right? There's a lot of stuff that they're saying currently sign up for the Snapmaker. It begs to be seen whether this printer is actually going to be reliable. The problem with Snapmaker, based on your guys' comments in the other video, is that they make really good printers. They're just not reliable. So it takes a lot to fix them. I mean, I've seen they make all of their products look really pretty, but I think if you don't have a reliable if you don't have a reliable printer, is not going to take over a whole bunch of market share, which is why it hasn't quite yet. Because if they can make it affordable, they can make it look good, you know, Bamboo Lab style, then it's going to take over a lot of market share. So they're they're really, I think with this printer, banking on being one of the first multi-tool head printers that hopefully works. You know, I, I don't like doing the Kickstarters. Um, you know, Snapmaker has been around for a while, so I don't have any doubts that you'll get the product like some other companies we'll see, we'll see. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if it's worth taking the risk because they don't really have a proven history of delivering great quality products based on my research, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, I haven't used one myself. So that's based off of just kind of the comments I've gotten on previous videos. Um, but it does look like an interesting step and I think it will push some of the innovation in the 3D printing consumer space with the multi-tool head. And so let's go ahead and talk about the Artillery M1 Pro. So this is kind of just an update. We haven't really seen anybody get this printer, except for there is one video. So I appreciate someone uh, put it in the comments on last week's video that the Artillery M1 was actually seen. So there is a random video of a user in Thailand of all places, it's a 26 minute just vertical video of them unboxing the Artillery M1 Pro. So if I go to their page, they don't have anything else on it. This is like the first artillery printer out in the wild for the M1 Pro. And it's just, I don't know, maybe this person was a beta tester. I, it's kind of weird that there's no additional information on it. So. I guess we shall see. I don't know. <laughs> like, it's crazy that we're supposed to be launching here at the end uh, or fulfilling pre orders at the end of July, and we still don't have a full video or unboxing video from Artillery themselves, as far as I can see. So, what are we doing? You know, it makes it kind of scary to pre order stuff like that when they're not really actively like holding live streams and influencers have the product in the hand they either says they're not confident in their product or they're so confident that they don't need to send it to influencers i think it's probably the first option um but we shall see and as i stated before i actually had reached out to artillery a few months back and i said maybe it's them letting me down easy but they did say they did not have any plans to send the product to any influencers for now. I, I don't know. Well, again, we'll see what it ends up turning out. I always hope for successful 3D printers because you know what? That drives prices down. It drives innovation. It drives everything, right? So yeah, we'll, we'll see where all artillery comes out with this 3D printer. We'll see how it looks on launch. And if it looks decent, I'll pick one up. If not, I will cover some of the issues people will have it in the 3D printing news and kind of make you guys aware about anything that's going on with that printer. So just an update as well for Elegoo. So if you guys are waiting on the Elegoo AMS, they had open sauce last weekend. I thought we might see something on the multicolored space, but I did have my doubts. There's still nothing about the AMS. Um, you know, I'm thinking that they're not gonna actually announce it till like the last day in Q3, especially with the Centauri being delayed. I don't want to talk about this too much. We'll just update you guys every single week if we've seen any information on the Elegoo AMS. But when it launches, I will probably pre-order it so that way I can get one and test it out. But again, I have one of those first batch Centauri Carbons where they also need to implement a solution to actually, you know, getting the AMS on my printer because I had some people tell me 
like, hey, it was not advertised to have AMS. I went to archive.org. It said multi-click printing coming Q3 from the very first launch date. So I don't know where some of you guys got that information. It's always been, I've always been under the assumption that the Centauri Carbon will have it, even with the first batch. So don't come at me with, they're doing me a favor. They're not, uh, <laughs> but let's move on. So I did talk about Yumi in another episode, but I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update on the Yumi Kickstarter. They are at $212,941. That might sound like a lot, but they only have 317 backers. So of course, I'm assuming a lot of people bought multiple of their printers that they really like them. And so they want to support them. Again, these guys are big on TikTok or I don't know if they're big on TikTok, but they do have a quite a bit of users actually kind of advertising their Kickstarter on TikTok, which I don't understand why you don't reach out to the YouTube space. It doesn't make any sense, but here we go. So it is open source. We'll talk about this a little bit more because I've done a little bit more like information digging on them. You know, again, I'm of the wait and see when it comes to Yumi. Um, overall though, open source, they, they have an interesting way of mounting their multicolored filament systems. It also seems kind of gimmicky adding the led lights. I, I, I don't know like what actual, I mean, it doesn't serve any function, right? Like they, they don't look like even in like the, the photoshops is adding anything to the printer. Maybe it's just a good touch. Maybe they think people like it. Um, but I did mention that they were trying to be, I believe the fastest printer. I guess they don't really advertise that, that they're the fastest, but let's see in early 2024, they asked what it would take to get multicolored, truly fast, clean and accessible to all. They have six core goals, reduced filament waste, eliminate perch towers, uh, make 3d printing easier, speed up multicolored print time, support more than four colors. I mean, everyone offers that, right? Um, but you know, make multicolored printing truly affordable, but I think, Multicolor printing is truly affordable now. So again, I'm of the wait and see. I really do hope that Yumi is successful because again, it drives down the prices of every single other thing. I just, I'm just not sure. I, you know, the bed slinger being your first product, I think, well, again, we'll, we'll see where they're going. Again, I like seeing any sort of competition on Yumi. I just figured I would cover them again. So if you guys want to check it out, if you're willing to give them a go, um, you know, they have the Kickstarter here and I think just supporting any sort of projects when it comes to Kickstarters and anything is important because it is a good way for companies to get their foot in the door. But again, you do take that risk of never actually getting your product. I do think you'll get them though, but we'll see how they actually work. And when they're being tested, you know, by a lot of users, that usually is what happened, right? When the Centauri Carbon went out all these users started using it. And then you started getting all these issues that no one really mentioned in reviews. So we'll see. I have heard that they're working to try to get some of the bigger influencers, some of the 3D printers, or at least I've seen that in comments on TikTok. So we'll see if that actually ends up happening. All right, so another interesting topic is actually, so this is from Tom's Hardware. Uh, I'm gonna reference two articles from Tom's Hardware. As always, I will link them down below where I'm getting the information. So police link ghost guns to specific 3D printers using fingerprints from 3D printers. Tool marks left behind during printing can make ghost guns traceable. So when what do they mean by ghost guns, right? We're having guns with no serial number. So people are 3D printing their, their firearms and, you know, I would never recommend that somebody do that. Um, you know, it can be dangerous, first of all. You know, it it just opens a whole can of worms that you probably don't want to get yourself into. So uh, what happened was police actually were able to track down a 3D printer based on the marks it was le leaving behind on the gun. That's kind of the way I have interpreted this. To me, I don't know like if it happened to actually be coincidence because knowing 3d printing right you can change out the nozzle you can change out the extruding gear you can change out every single component so to me i don't believe that any 3d printer is going to consistently leave marks and what did the police take the 3d printer and then go and try to 3d print the same exact item it doesn't really seem to make sense but i'm guess i'm not uh you know well informed about the forensics of a 3d printer i guess so we'll see if they actually were able i mean i guess they were not they're never going to tell us but i have my doubts on if this was actually legit uh, because i think someone could go in there change a part and it's not going to look the same mention in the comments below if you think this is actually possible and real quick if you guys are enjoying this video remember to hit that like button hit that subscribe button it really helps out the channel but with that being said i i just don't 
think they're referring to it as tool marks. I just don't think that, I don't know, maybe this, I think it just happened to be a coincidence. But again, let me know if you guys think the forensics of a 3D printer can actually be traceable. So, and with that being said though, that led into the next thing is that ghost gun crackdown. So as far as Thingiverse, they were asked to remove all of the gun 3D files that they actually had. So they created an AI, AI based systems to detect and block gun prints. So we're already being tracked as far as like what you can 3D print, unless you're fully offline. Where are you downloading those models? Unless you're downloading them completely or doing them all yourself in sort of a blender or some sort of 3D modeling software, you downloaded them from somewhere, someone knows that you had it, right? Anytime you download something, that, that website can see it. So, you know, don't think that you're gonna go ahead and 3D print these things and no one's gonna know. Like they're going to know, they're going to be able to trace it, you know, all it takes is for the authorities to go to these websites and ask for your history, like, and they're going to give it to them, right? They want, they don't want to be taken down. So guys, just be aware that anything that you're 3D printing, regardless, people are going to be able to find it, right? And I know a lot of people say Bamboo Lab, they're tracking everything you do, but it's a liability thing. If they knew that you were 3D printing guns and something were to happen because, you know, someone used that gun for something, they could be held liable. And there's a lot even worse cases or more generic cases that happen with that kind of stuff guilty by association um type deal where if they were able to prevent it they should have it's like you know you see a water spill happen in front of you but because there was no wet floor sign you go and slip on it um but you knew full well that the wet floor sign was there and you know walmart or whoever just didn't add that sign there and then you sue them and you win Walmart could have prevented it because maybe they saw it happen and they didn't add that sign there, but you knew it was full well and wrong not to walk through that. That's kind of the way I see this as well. All right, so that's kind of all I have for the 3D printing news this week. If you guys think I missed out on anything, comment down below and I'll add it to next week's episode. Um, yeah, kind of a light news week for everything. Again, I greatly appreciate all the support you guys have been offering on this series. Again, it's going to be continuing every single Friday at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9 a.m. Eastern. So if you guys want to follow along with the 3D printing news, make sure you hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and comment down below what you would like to see. Every single comment helps drive this content to more and more people, allows me to do more things with this. So with that being said, guys, again, if I missed out on anything, comment down below, and we'll see you guys next week at the same time.